Asia driving sustainable growth. That's the theme of the Asian Financial Forum 2012 here in Hong Kong. And addressing that question is Kenneth Dewoskin. He's the director of Deloitte China Research and Insight Center. Dr. Dewoskin, thanks indeed for joining us. Now, looking at sustainable growth, can Asia really sustain that? And can it project it? Well, I think that uh, Asia is driving towards sustainability. Uh, but sustainability means different things to different people. Uh, if you listen to the leadership when they were talking about the 12 5 year plan uh, and looking ahead after China has, I think by most people's agreement, survived the global financial crisis rather well, uh, sustainability actually meant lowering the growth rate, achieving a better quality of growth, and quality of growth was exactly equal to the notion of sustainable growth. So Dr. Dewoskin, where does China really go down this sustainable path? Well, first of all, I, I would look to measure sustainability uh, in terms of a, of a longer term stability of the various monetary measures the government can deploy in the economy. Uh, when we see around the world, whether we're talking about the Eurozone or the U.S. dollar zone or what we describe as the enlarging renminbi zone, when you see continuous short-term adjustments being made to, to address short-term urgent issues, that is not sustainable. So to me, sustainability is not about a particular growth rate. It's not about a particular value of the currency. It's about policy which is able to be maintained for six months or eight months or ten months or even two years, uh, which for many of us we remember was the way it was for a while. So China and other countries really want that affluence, but how does that square really with sustainability? China, you know, targeted increased consumer spending uh, as a way of achieving a sustainable growth rate in China and also as a way of detaching itself somewhat from a dependence on infrastructure investment and a dependence on exports. Exports, because they rely on the demand in foreign markets, are just simply outside the control of the economy, of the people who are the stewards of the economy. Um, so that was part of the target. It actually measured by you know, economic performance. Uh, domestic consumption is not increasing as a driver of growth in China. Uh, it is increasing in real terms, but not as a driver of growth. It's actually decreasing as a driver of growth. So we're not quite on the right path to achieve that yet, but uh, it is a policy goal. Now looking at Hong Kong, last year at this time, you really talked about Hong Kong as a center for the renminbi. But can it also be a center really for sustainability as such? I see those two things as actually two sides of the same coin because the growth of renminbi activity in Hong Kong has continued to be very strong. Uh, it's now a very significant part of Hong Kong's competitive advantage and financial future. Uh, the renminbi itself, I think, has been significantly marketized. You know, the policy in Beijing notwithstanding, right now market pressures in Hong Kong, traders deciding to import or export and settle in renminbi, has a great deal to do on the perceived value of the currency. So what we've had compared to last year is a much more marketized currency now, which means, like all marketized currencies, uh, there will be appreciation and there will be depreciation uh, on an almost daily basis. And so people will begin to speculate more in the renminbi. People who depend on renminbi for investment and trade settlement uh, will need instruments, financial products, and services related to the fact that the currency has reached a kind of equilibrium now uh, and is much more freely traded and, and, and deployed. So that's a great thing for Hong Kong because Hong Kong is master. I mean, as an economy overall, that's the master, uh, master touch that Hong Kong brings to the story. And if one thinks of Hong Kong as being sustainable in the green sense, can Hong Kong be a center for that too? Well, I think Hong Kong in many respects is a model, uh, not only for mainland China, but for the rest of Asia. Uh, in terms of creating a livable environment under a lot of pressures, population pressures, resource pressures. Hong Kong is, is disadvantaged in many respects, a very large population, very limited amount of space to deploy, and reliance on other countries for the most basic things, electricity, water, almost all food, all raw materials and things like that. But Hong Kong's done a brilliant job of not only maintaining but creating one of the best, most livable environments in the world. So absolutely. Now you're going to be attending the Asian Financial Forum 2012. Do you see it as a forum really looking at the big issues, including, of course, sustainability? I think this year's Asia Financial Forum is going to be more significant than ever. Uh, it's, not a, uh, it's a fairly new program still. It's only got a few year history. But so much attention now around the world is focused on what's going on in Asia. And again, the difference from last year is that the problems are more complicated now. There are more viewpoints. There are many, many different viewpoints now on China's future, many different viewpoints on how Hong Kong will develop, many different viewpoints on how uh, Asia as a whole will develop. And these are the sorts of things that are the real substance of this forum. So I'm looking forward to it. And I know many people that uh, I know who are associated with it are looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a, an event with a lot of discovery, intense discussion, 
and I would say a realistic discussion of important issues.